So, the signs and symptoms of aging can be delayed, and in some instances, relieved and even reversed by restoring optimal endocrine balance. Unfortunately, I haven't found more than a couple of endocrinologists in this city that actually do this. My point of view is that's their job. Their point of view is they have to stay within the realm of getting referrals from each other, so they can't do things that maybe they would like to do or maybe they won't believe in. I don't know what the answer is. But very simple things that we talk about all the time. Thyroid issues. How many people in here have seen their thyroid results in their labs? What, what do you usually see? You see a TSH normally. Some doctors that are really forward going will check for a free T4. Does that tell us what's going on with our thyroid? Not a bit. No, we need to get the free T3. I don't see it because people bring their labs in when I work with them. I always say, bring in all your labs, let's take a look at it, let's see where you're coming through, and let's see where we're going to. Okay, we use that as a guide. And I rarely see a lot of these markers that are checked by the average doc. Not to say that they're not brilliant people, because I think they are. To get through medical school is pretty tough. But because the training we get in medical school and residency, we're very limited in the little blinders that we wear. So we have to step out the box to really help people. When I was a kid, believe it or not, because it, it seems strange to me when I think back, I used to pretend I was Ponce de Leon. <laughs> so the people laughing know who that was. He was the Spaniard that came looking for the Fountain of Youth. And I had this vision of what the Fountain of Youth was. It was water coming out and people would bathe in it and they'd be healed instantly. And then I find myself so many years later doing this kind of medicine. So the hormone male modulation that we look at is very similar to female because we male and female all have the same hormones, okay? So to me, the, the, the creme de la creme of all hormones is testosterone. Do women believe that? Anyone who's a woman believe that? Raise your hand. I got one. I got two. So we have a big room here of people, and I, so far I see two, two women who think that's important. There we go. We got more back here? Okay, good. Men have a lot of testosterone. When we supplement testosterone, we'll typically supplement about 100 times more for a man than a woman. But a woman needs her little amount just as much as a man needs his big amount for the exact same reasons, and we'll get into that. We check E1 and E2. E1 is a form of estrogen, which when it's high is not good for us. It's called estrone. It causes all kinds of problems. Yeah. In breast tissue, it can proliferate that. In uterine tissue, it can proliferate that. So there's an association with cancer. So we try to keep that on the lower level. When women go through menopause, and the average menopausal weight gain is guess how much? You got it, 20 pounds. That's average. But I have women who come in the office, and a lot of you coming here will get a free bone density and a free body fat analysis. You're going to be pretty shocked. Men and women lose bone, starting at about the age of 30. Now, those of us who have had a lot of testosterone, male and female, when we were young, we build up more bone than people that don't. DHEA is important. It's good for longevity, for the immune system. Thyroid, I mentioned the free T3, melatonin, very important. We'll get into all of these. Pregnenolone, hormone for the brain. Never found a person over 30 that had much. Cortisol, that's the one we want to keep on the lower side. Insulin, we want to keep on the lower side. Human growth hormone, big question today whether we should use it or not. And we'll get into that too. So you see for females, we have pretty much the same thing here, don't we? Is that shocking to anyone? No, just different amounts. Now, I want to say that this is probably the very crux of how I practice medicine in this diagram. So can you folks in the back see this? Good. This is called a bell curve. For those of you who don't know what it is, it shows the statistics of taking a sample of people and pretending that's everybody. All right? We can't test everybody. But let's say we're looking at bone density because we're going to talk some about that. If we start with the mean, which is the middle point of all these people, the middle number, it's zero on this graph. That equals you've got good bones, let's say. Okay? If you're on this side of it to the left, that means that you're losing bone. I'm going to venture 75% of people in this room or higher have bone loss. Even big burly men have bone loss. 
Okay? We always thought of osteoporosis as what? Female disease, right? Not so. We have a GE Lunar bone densitometry machine in our office. I check as many people who will do it, and I find that most people have bone loss. Very scary. In my 40s, I found out that I had bone loss. Okay? I was at a medical convention, and uh, I saw a guy who looked about 15 years older than myself, full of energy, all pumped up, and I walked up to him and I said, why do you look so good? And he looked at me and he said, why do you feel bad? You know, he just knew why I was asking. And I said, I don't know why. I said, I just don't feel real good. He said, get your testosterone checked. I was like, why? He said, just do it. I checked my testosterone. It was below this. It was right down here at the bottom. It wasn't really on the normal scale in labs. I immediately almost ran to get a bone density because I knew what the low testosterone meant. And my bones were down here somewhere. Okay? They've regrown, but I've been supplementing with testosterone now for more than 15 years. Okay? I don't go into a high range like a bodybuilder because we're not even allowed to treat people for that. But I just get into what's a normal range for me, you know, somewhere that might be right in here. Now, this is the old medical paradigm. This is the medicine we're taught in medical school. Check the bones, check the labs, check the MRIs, check the x-rays, and if you're over here, that's okay. Because why? That's normal for your age. Anyone here want to be normal for their age? I don't. No. no. Say it louder. No. 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 <laughs> and we don't have to be anymore. Okay? So if we look at my bell curve, where is it shifted to? Mine starts here. I don't want anyone in my practice in here. I won't allow it. People want to be there, I tell them to go away, I can't help you, don't spend your money. Because I'm going to push people to move over to the right so that there is no negativity here, there is no loss of bone, there is no depreciation of hormones. None of these things are available to my patients. A few still stick on and they don't want to follow directions, that's life. But sometimes they pick up the ball later after I planted the seed, and that's my, my hope for everybody. So, whereas the higher standard deviations here, which are really great, for me that's, you know, maybe down here. I'd like people to be even better. I'd like them to be right up here if they can. Why not? Feel great. You can do it. So the three different types of estrogen, E1 I mentioned, which is estrone. That's the one when it's high is not very good. Postmenopausal women who gain weight. The fat carries estrogen, it stores estrogen, it produces E1, the estrogen we don't really want a lot of. E2 is estradiol, which is a good form of estrogen. When someone is given estradiol, it will break down into E1 and E3, which is estriol. So a lot of doctors prescribe what we call triest. It's a little bit of all of these. Some will prescribe biest, which is just E2 and E3. It's the art of medicine. Doctors do it the way they want. For me, I just use the E2 because it's going to break down to these others anyway. Now, estriol is a very nice estrogen. It's not very powerful, but it's associated with a lesser amount of cancer for breast cancer. Let's talk about menopause because that's a real fun thing to go through, I'm sure, from what I hear about it. Thank goodness I'm a guy, although we have our issues too. We have prostates. So what happens with menopause? Anyone here in menopause or going through menopause? Or? Okay. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. Well, the things that people, not everyone goes through menopause in the way that they feel it, by the way. Some women who are very active and thin, exercising, never get hot flashes because they're doing good nutrition, they're taking care of themselves. So we have vaginal dryness, painful intercourse. How many postmenopausal women want to get in bed with their husbands? Not too many. They may think the relationship is sour, but I just finished a book, and it's all about how to rejuvenate relationships with bioidentical hormones. People come in, and they don't want to be together. When they first come in, they're sitting on opposite sides of the chairs. Then we tune them up, and they're all cuddly again. You know, they're whispering in each other's ears, sweet nothings. So what is love? I'm very confused about that. <laughs> because it seems that when we tune up the hormones, people are in love again. 
hot flashes. Who 